Like, why aren't people talking about this more? Why aren't people talking about this makeup more? Because this makeup is good. Like, good makeup. Like, this should be the stuff that's viral on TikTok, in my humble opinion. That's what I think. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. We're doing an entirely themed like this video is 100% about makeup product that I think should be viral. I actually got this video idea off of another tick it was off of a TikTok video, but I was like this this is definitely this applies to a lot of my makeup collection. I have a lot of things that are really really good quality makeup, but nobody talks about them and I don't understand why. Now, this product is a product that I currently have in my collection. I pulled it all out and we're going to talk about this today because I truly feel like this makeup should be viral. It should be overhyped. It should be talked about all over the YouTube, TikTok, Instagram space because it is really, really good, really good product. So let's get into this video. First off, if you guys are new here, my name is Stacy. I feature unfiltered makeup opinions and honest reviews. If you like content like that, definitely consider subscribing before you go. Definitely hit that like button and leave me a comment during any portion of the video. I love to have conversations in the comments section down below, so definitely leave me a comment down below. But today we're talking about product that should be viral because it's really, really good. And I don't understand why it's not viral because it's so good it should be viral so we have a lot of like face products here we foundations we're going to start with foundations this is product that i actually raved about in my favorites of 2023 but i still don't see anybody really talking about these and the two foundations that definitely i feel like they should be viral like they are just so good they wear such a really long time they don't over accentuate pores or wrinkles they don't settle into fine lines and they literally look like you're not wearing any kind of makeup at all but they do just give this really beautiful finishing effect on the face and they also provide a really great full coverage and maybe that's why they aren't viral is because they provide like a really good full coverage, not like a medium coverage or a light coverage like what we've been really seeing lately. So maybe that's why they're not as viral as what they should be, but they are fantastic. The first one is the Super Matte two-in-one foundation and concealer. Like I said, this is a full coverage foundation. It is from Makeup Revolution's Relove line. It is a $5 foundation. It actually comes with just like a twist up top and I actually ended up putting like a pump on it because I knew, I just knew that like I needed to be able to use a pump with this instead of, you know, dumping it onto like a makeup palette or onto my sponge or onto my brush. It's not only is this a affordable foundation, but it acts as like a two-in-one. It says it is a foundation and a concealer, and it is literally full coverage. If you are looking for a foundation that is very skin-like, very full coverage, and it lasts forever on your skin, this is one for you. I actually have tested this with a like transfer proof foundation routine, and I have one of those. I have that up on my channel, so definitely go check it out, but this is so underrated. It should be more viral. And if you guys haven't checked it out yet, definitely go check it out. You can find it at Walmart and you might actually be able to find it at like Target too because Target now has Makeup Revolution, the like the product Makeup Revolution. But I've had this bottle. I bought it sometime in 2023. If I'm grabbing for a foundation on a normal everyday basis, it's typically this one or it's typically another one, which is the Maybelline Superstay 30 Hour Active Wear Foundation. Now they also have a concealer that I'm just like obsessed with and that is the Superstay Concealer. I love that one. It actually reminds me a lot of the Tower 28 Serum Concealer. We'll put that in a different video. That one should be viral as well. The 30 Hour Superstay Active Wear Foundation. Though this used to not be like active wear foundation. This actually used to be kind of a different thing. They reformulated and when they reformulated they made it a million times better. I did a foundation Friday video of this foundation as well. I did like a 12 hour wear test with it. We went through the ringer. We did the mom test where like I had water splashed in my face. My kids were loving up on me and this literally lasted all day long. It didn't wear down funny. It didn't separate. It didn't coagulate. It didn't do anything funny on my skin. It didn't settle into any fine lines or wrinkles. And literally, when I first applied this, I was like, 
Where is the foundation? Where is the foundation? Because you literally could not see, like you could see that it was covering, but you could not tell that I actually was wearing foundation. It just really just like added to your skin and it just looked so beautiful and so radiant. It's honestly, if I'm not reaching for the super matte, it's this one from Maybelline that I'm also reaching for. These are like my two foundations, but nobody talks about them. The Superstay Active Wear Concealer from Maybelline. I actually don't have it anymore because I went through it and I'm going to pop a picture up for you. But this is a very like serum-like thin and consistency concealer, but it actually is really like a medium coverage. And because it has that like active wear in it, it literally feels like you're not wearing anything, but it provides an amazing like full coverage and it blends out seamlessly on the under eyes. The only thing that I can really compare it to would be the Tower 28 Serum Concealer. It's very similar to that and it's at a fraction of the cost. So if you're looking for a dupe to the Tower 28, which everybody is like totally raving about, this concealer is definitely it. Nobody talks about this one either. This used to be a little bit more buzzed about in the makeup space, actually this brand in general, and it's the Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist. I've heard that this is actually a dupe for one of the MAC ones. I don't really know about that, but I do have to say all of the Pixi spray products are amazing. I have the Glow Mist and I also have the Hydrating Milky Mist. This I love to use after I'm done completely doing my makeup and then I just do one last spritz on my face to either rejuvenate my makeup if it's feeling a little bit dry, like I've had my makeup on for a couple of hours now, or if 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 I just want to give my face added moisture like right after I'm done doing it. And honestly, this is probably one of the best like hydrating mists that I've used because it doesn't make your skin feel moist, but it does rejuvenate your makeup. And I think these retail for like maybe $20. Pixie is more on like the higher end of drugstore, but they're still considered a drugstore option. But this is such a beautiful mist. It sprays nicely. The packaging is really nice. And like, it just doesn't, it's not offensive by any means, but it really does make your makeup look really beautiful. And definitely like, why doesn't, why doesn't the beauty space talk about this anymore? And also, this one, the Lasting Fix from Maybelline. This one is literally a dupe for MAC Fix Plus. Like I tr I truly think this is a dupe for MAC Fix Plus. It's a matte setting spray. It does give me a very matte finish, but it also gives me a very like transfer resistant finish for my makeup as well. And I found every single time I wear this, my makeup just lasts a heck of a lot longer, but it reminds me of MAC Fix Plus, but nobody talks about this at all. This is a great setting spray. It retails for about $9 if you go to the drugstore and purchase it on Ulta. It's a little bit more, but honestly, like this comes in 3.4 fluid ounces. So you get a lot of product in here for $10 and it acts like a high-end setting spray. Let's talk about, okay, finishing products like powders. Powders, because these are really good. And again, nobody really talks about them. At one point in time, the Brighten Up Banana Powder from Essence was like all a buzz on the beauty space, but nobody really talks about this one anymore, and I'm really surprised that nobody has like rediscovered this product. Now, the packaging is a little bit cheap, but the product inside is so good. It retails for like $4.99, $3.99, somewhere in there, and this is a banana powder, so like my packaging broke because that's just life. But if I can find my little velour puff here, there it is. So this is such a great brightening powder. Like we used to thrive on brightening powders way back in the day when contouring was like the it thing. And literally this provides such a smooth brightening finish to my under eyes. I've definitely found that banana brightening powders for me, really negate the blue and the purple because I tend to get those kinds of colors on my under eyes because I don't, again, I'm a mom. Like, do I ever sleep? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But banana brightening powders are great for brightening and fixing the purple pigments in your face. So if you get a lot of like blue undertones on your eyes, this is definitely going to negate it. If you guys know anything about color theory, yellow and purple are complementary colors. So the purple will cancel out the yellow will cancel out the purple, and it really does. It really brightens my eyes. It really brings them to life. They, it doesn't look cakey or dry on my face. It just looks so beautiful. And 
So for finishing powder. So that one's more of like a under eye brightening powder. Definitely it's not talked about in the beauty space as much as what it used to be. And I'm actually really surprised with all these like pink and peach brightening powders that that actually has not been brought up in recent years. In recent months, I should, should say. I'm really surprised that nobody has brought up that powder in recent months. Is like, guys, like if you have purple undertones or blue undertones, the yellow will cancel it out. I'm really surprised nobody's talked about that. As far as like actual finishing powders go, I feel like we are in a loose powder like generation right now. There's a lot of loose powders that are flouting around out there. I kind of feel like we're back in like 2016 in some ways. But there are still some really great pressed finishing powders that definitely deserve more talk, more hype, more buzz. One of them would have to be the number seven. This is the Translucent Perfect Light Press Powder. This one is actually pretty much a spot on dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter Powder. And this is a very finely milled powder. It actually is supposed to be translucent, but I found that it's a little bit tinted, but for somebody who is very pasty pale like me, it actually really brightens my under eyes like really, really well. And it is a very beautiful, non-texturizing finishing powder, especially for my problem areas that tend to crease a lot. It's it's a great product. Number seven is actually more of like a skincare line. So their makeup products are really, really good. I definitely have high praise for this one. I mean, guys, like look at the pan in this. Like they're, I've actually got a divot in this because I use it so much. I either use it with a like small detailed brush to get like under my eyes or I use a velour puff to set my face. And then the other like magic setting powder that I'm just absolutely obsessed with is definitely this one. It's been mentioned on my channel. Guys, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. But if you're not if you're not new to my channel by any means, there is the Sephora Micro Smooth Baked Setting Powder, and this is in the shade 05 Porcelain. This is my favorite, my favorite. I'm a little bit biased to this one. I think this is just a magical powder overall. I use this powder in my transfer proof makeup routine with the Super Matte Two in One, and it is just such a beautiful powder. Technically. On the Sephora website, it says it's a foundation, but it doesn't really act like that, although I do like to use this with the Quickie Concealer, some of the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, and I just create a very basic, neutral, neutral look without like a whole bunch of foundation on. And this is such a great setting powder because it is baked, it's smooth, finely milled, it doesn't settle into any fine lines or wrinkles. You can use a velour puff, you can use a brush, you could even take your finger and very lightly just push this into the skin if you're really feeling like that is the best application. But overall, it doesn't pick up on my finger at all, like when I am applying it with my finger. And it also doesn't accentuate any fine lines, any pores, any wrinkles. Like, this is just such a beautiful product. Honestly, if you're looking for something that kind of does it all, that's kind of like a powder foundation, but also a finishing powder, this is for you. It is so good. It retails for $20, I believe, at Sephora. And sometimes you can get it on sale for $10. So definitely go check that out. I have a couple of, like, there's one brand in particular that I feel like it should be more viral, should be more viral in the beauty space. And I'm really surprised that it's not. It is talked about quite a bit, but it isn't like one of those things where it's completely sold out, so viral that you can't find it. LYS. LYS is such a beautiful product. I actually have just these two products from LYS and I've also tried their primer before. Their primer is really good. It's a serum primer and it is grippy. It is very hydrating on the skin and it just makes your skin feel very plump. I actually went through my hydrating primer and I don't have that one anymore, but it's definitely a great primer for a more like technically, every, I feel like everything at Sephora is more of like a luxury price point. LYS is actually in more of the like affordable category. They are kind of on the higher end of like drugstore because there are some drugstores that compete with this or are a little bit less than this. So these ones are like, they're like the low end of luxury, but they're not quality wise. They're not low end at all. They're very high end in the quality of their makeup. But we have these triangle. I currently have the bronzer and then the blush and the blush is actually a cream blush so we'll get to that one in a second but the bronzer 
The bronzer is the No Limits Matte Bronzer. This is in the shade Motivate. It is definitely a very warm tone, but this powder is very smoothly milled, very finely milled, and it doesn't accentuate anything on my face at all, and it does like blend like a dream. Now, the only thing I really just don't like about LYS is the triangle packaging, but I think that's what sets them apart as well from other brands because they are the triangle packaging. But overall, like the bronzer quality lasts a really long time. It looks beautiful on my face and it literally is just so smooth when you put it on. I think this one retails for like $18 or $19. Guys, you can get a Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer for $14.99. So just go a couple bucks more and you will get something that's very high-end quality. This one is not... Just so you guys know, it doesn't have a sheen to it really, not like what like a butter bronzer would or some of those other like the MAC bronzers. Like this one is definitely an all matte bronzer. It doesn't really have a sheen to it and it just, it looks so beautiful on the skin. I feel very bronzed and glowy when I wear this. And then the blush, I do have just one shade of their cream blush. It's the Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in Self Love. This is more of like a berry tone and it is so, so beautiful, so easy to blend out, super pigmented. The cream in this, it's not sticky at all. Like when it actually finishes, it's not intrusive or invasive. It doesn't cling to anything funny on your face and it does play well over powder product or even on top of your foundation. It's definitely a, a very good product and it does dry down to a powder finish. So it's just such a beautiful product. I love their higher standards blush. Like if you're looking for a good cream blush, they have more than that color and they are really, really good. Eyeshadow palettes. I actually have one. I featured this in my like unconventional Valentine's Day eyeshadow palettes and it also transitions really well into spring, but I had to bring this out because I mentioned it in that video and it's the Lorac Soleil palette. The, I feel like Lorac in general is very like underrated as a brand in the beauty space. I remember one point in time Lorac was a little bit more hyped up, like people loved their eyeshadow formula and they've kind of just fallen off and I believe that they fall more into the category for like professional makeup artists because they do have like the pro palettes that are they have a pretty hefty price tag to them and they are made for more professional makeup artists but the Lorac Soleil palette this is a warm neutral eyeshadow palette you have one side that is mattes one side that is all metallics with some like shimmery shades in there as well but this eyeshadow palette like if you're looking for a warm neutral eyeshadow palette that also offer the, offers those like rosy tones. Like this eyeshadow palette is for you because you do have those deeper brown tones in here. You do have almost like a couple of pinker tones in here as well. You have the lighter shades for a great, you know, just overall like setting your eyelid. You do have this really nice peachy tone shade. And then the foils are just so pigmented and so buttery smooth and they look so nice on your lid. It's just... It is literally like Metallic City, Foil City for your lids. And that's just like a couple of the shades in here. But if you're the type of person who likes that rose gold sultry look and you're looking for something that's a, got a lot of range for you to play with, not just like, you know, 12 shades or something, this is an 18 pan eyeshadow palette. The size of this is actually decently small. It comes with a full size mirror. Like this is actually a pretty friendly travel friendly palette and it offers all of these really beautiful matte shades in here and the foils like it's just such a very underrated palette in general like this Lorac palette is so beautiful so quality like it really is like Lorac is like a very underrated brand when it comes to their eyeshadow palettes we have one more brand for eyeshadow that I just feel is a little bit underrated I have recently had the chance to try out some of their quads and I received them in boxy charms and I'm talking about the El Maquillage eyeshadow formula. I actually have two shades from the Color Boss quad. Um this is the Call the Shots one, which is more of a like bronzy, penny, neutral. It only comes with one matte and then three foily shades. And then I also have this quad. This quad is actually my favorite. It's the Trendsetter quad. Now, first of all, can we just talk about the packaging for a minute? Because, like, the packaging is thick, it's quality, it's sturdy, it's not going anywhere, and it is absolutely stunning. 
The quality of the shadows on the inside is also just absolutely beautiful, especially like the Trendsetter palette. I feel like, honestly, both of these, they're both very underrated, but their matte shades are like a cream to matte formula. Cream to matte. Cream to powder. Their matte shades are a cream to powder formula, so they go on feeling more like a cream and then they settle down like a powder and they powder dry. But the thing I love about these is that I have tried their cream to powder formulas on my eyes and they just blend out like a dream. They do not give me any kind of problem at all. And typically for eyeshadows like this, especially these deeper shades, when they are a cream to powder, or even sometimes just like a regular matte eyeshadow that's not cream to powder i have like ridiculous amount of problems with some of those shades just because of the the folds and the way that my eye is i do have hooded eyes so it's really hard for me to be able to get really pigmented blendable mattes on my face if they're really dark in tone and these ones they just blended so effortlessly and then their foil shades, I truly feel like these are also a cream to powder finish as well for the foil shades because they, they feel and they look when you swatch them like they feel like a cream on your face. They may be a powder, but they literally just, they go on so pigmented. Like you, I kind of feel like a, a cream eyeshadow would go on and then they're, they, they don't budge. They don't crease. They don't fold into your lines like they just look so beautiful on your eyes the trendsetter palette is honestly my favorite because it has a balance of matte and shimmer shades it is such a beautiful palette i feel like overall though the el maquillage formula is very underrated if you're looking for like a really good quad the trendsetter palette is really good and call the shots is really beautiful like if you're just like a neutral lover and you just want one matte shade with some shimmers for like one and done looks then this is definitely a palette for you both of these palettes are very underrated and they are so so pretty i guess a version of this one is coming back to be viral i don't understand why this particular pa this particular face powder is not back on the like viral list and i wanted to put this in here as an honorable mention because it kind of is viral kind of isn't viral the shade i have is called cupcake but it is the huda beauty loose the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder, this was totally viral in 2016 when baking was like the thing. And I know that there's actually a peach version and a pink version that came out that are specifically for like brightening the under eyes. But I wonder, I really wonder why this specific powder from Huda hasn't become like super viral again, just as a good setting powder in general. It is so finely milled. Um, it's it is a little bit scented but honestly you kind of get over that if you're not baking like crazy it is one of those powders that just finishes really nicely on the skin it doesn't settle into anything super weird or funky or it doesn't like over accentuate your pores or anything it definitely is one of those products that you can use a brush and I love using a brush to just kind of like pat it into my face and do like a dusting all over my face or you can use like a beauty blender and you can set it into your face as well and really like pack it in there and like you know bake if you want to but I honestly feel like this is still one of those products that like it's very very like very underrated it's a really beautiful powder I don't understand why just the Huda Beauty like baked loose powder is not viral. I know that the pink and the peach versions are really getting hyped up, but like just the original OG powder, it is so good and that that honestly deserves more hype. So there you have it, my list of product that should be viral. This is all product that it performs well. It is just so it has a great price point most of it it is very 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 inexpensive most of these they also are just like they perform so well they make your makeup look amazing and I don't understand why these aren't more hyped and why more creators aren't talking about this beauty product in the beauty space thank you guys so much for watching and staying tuned to the end of this video please consider subscribing before you go and I hope I get to see you in my next video bye